Good morning. Today is Wednesday, uh, February 22nd. The time right now, Singapore is 11.21 in the morning. We have uh, about uh, more than slightly more than uh, uh, 40 minutes uh, towards the midday itself. Now, over there on Wall Street, there's nothing really moved the market except for some PM numbers that was released in both the Eurozone and the UK, which show that both economies based on the data released based on the uh, manufacturing and services PMI released yesterday, uh, even the composite for the Eurozone shows that uh, the uh, economy uh, in the Eurozone uh, as a whole, and in particularly Germany, seems to be holding up pretty well. And that again gives rise to the idea that despite the rounds of rate hike, the economy is not seriously being affected. However, that also means that inflation may be flying all over again. And that leads to the idea that the central banks will have to again increase their rate hikes uh, in an effort to to further bring down inflation, okay? Even though inflation has come off a little bit, especially in Europe, uh, we can still see that it is still very, very high. As far as UK is concerned, it's still double digit. So we are still a long way to go before we can declare victory over inflation. And that again is becoming a negative for equity markets because if the idea is central bank is gonna to continue to increase its rate heights, then of course that will be a negative for equity markets. So we can see that overnight, on uh, Wall Street itself, we can see all the major equity index has actually backpedaled to the point whereby the Wall, uh, the Dow Jones itself, which has been holding within the boundary between 33,581 to 34,334, has finally clearly broke out of its uh, consolidation uh, range to the downside. Now, if this market continues to edge lower, there is the possibility if the market do a three-way pullback, then the target will be at 32,200 thereabout. Yesterday, I was talking to you that maybe the market uh, uh, may want to go up and if it does want to go up the top side is 35,500 there about but now that the market has clearly decided that you want to come down so that the, the, the 32,200 becomes sharply in focus so this is where I think the market may be heading at least in the medium to long uh, short term okay over in the S&P 500 which has the best chance to rally it also failed to rally last night now the market uh, uh, it is coming down and broke effectively the 4,000 points. And remember yesterday I did mention 4,000 point is a crucial point because it's a round number and the market has taken down the 4,000 and it does looks like this uh, could end up to be even more uh, uh, just more than just a corrective pullback. And if the market actually trade below 39,000, uh, 3,900, it could mean something more, uh, more sinister. It would mean that the market may have already top up at 4,195 and it's getting ready to resume its longer, uh, larger degree downtrend. Okay. And this can be clearly seen in the NASDAQ 100 knockout. The market has clearly broke below the support line and the market is heading towards the crucial level of 11,900. Now the market has already is already testing uh, the 12,000 levels. And if the market cannot hold, but I think the crucial level will be 11,900. The market goes all the way and even go and test 1,600. I think we can effectively say the market has already picked at 12,881 uh, back all the way back on February the 3rd. Okay, so this is going to be very interesting. We are not that far away from the end of February. So if the market continues to edge lower and if we end up February on a, on a very very low note that could be giving us a reversal on the monthly time frame so this could be something quite serious okay over in asia we can see that um the Hang Seng market has basically pulled back uh the high 22,700 remains the high for the for this move here and the market pulls back is it still it is still not running away yet. Uh, I have previously mentioned that the possibility the market may test the 20,300 level is pretty good. And now this morning it did, the lowest traded this morning is actually here, okay? Uh, let me go down to the one hour just to show you if there's, there's gonna be any reversal signal here, okay? Now, based on the one hour time frame, now, now, let me, let me uh, increase the size of the candle bar to show you. Okay, now this is an outside bar. Okay, the low be before this was uh, 20,349. So this low was a new low as far as this the last hour was concerned. Okay, that means uh, at 10 o'clock onwards, the market went up to a high. This is an outside bar on the daily time frame. Uh, on the daily time frame, and you can see that the market has an outside bar on the on the one hour time frame. So because the market has been trading within this band of prices, which I've already earlier 
on identify which is 0.618 retracement so this is a crucial level if the market can actually hold here and develop into a reversal signal which we already seen in the one hour time frame if by the end of today we see a key reversal in the daily time frame that give the idea that the market has already bottomed at 20,345 this morning and is getting ready to resume to the upside the immediate the if that's the case the immediate upside target obviously is going to be a challenge of 21,600 37 okay so this will be the immediate target that it must clear before it can actually have enough momentum to tackle the upside okay but if the market can actually clear the upside the uh the longer term target is 24,800 okay that, this is still my target over the medium to long term okay so because the structure in the Hang Seng is a little bit different compared to U.S. equity markets okay so over in the Shanghai we can see the Shanghai market has tested the 3,000 and 10 level three times in a row and this morning it attempts to uh, to uh, to challenge those high again now previously the high here 3000 and 3310 was actually traded at the end of january and again it tested in the middle of february on the 16th and recently as of yesterday the market again tested 3310 but it could only manage 3308 and did not quite go over and to, today in the early morning session we can find that the market still wants to challenge there is no saying that it cannot break because if the market keep on challenging there is a possibility it may break the 3310 now this is not a very crucial level but based on the uh the, the inability to clear that that gives the market a little bit of a uh, uh uh, uh we can see that there's obviously a fight going on here so if the market can actually take out the 300 3310 levels the immediate target is 3350 maybe to as high as 3375 to 3470 so the top side remains still a possibility we have to watch how the market reacts here if we can take out 3310 over in the Nikkei, Nikkei continued to drop this morning and this is a three-way pullback and the fact that it has already taken out the near-term support line and that is still allowable okay in a sense it's still allowable for the market to actually stabilize and manage to recover but again everything will depend on whether we see a recovery then the market now here uh in the shorter time frame we need to see some kind of reversal uh especially in the one hour time frame if you can see one right now there isn't one but if there's one then obviously this will be uh, giving us the idea that the market may be able to actually stabilize and resume its uptrend okay so far time being there is no signal this to suggest that and if the market continues to edge lower to go down below 27,000 then something else is happening the market may have already picked at 27,821 so we will have to look at this structure based on today's closing price and I think it will be crucial okay over in the currency market, we can see that the dollar continues to edge high to 135.23 overnight. And uh, this is telling us that the market is no longer in the corrective rebound phase. There is every possibility this market may actually be looking at something a little bit more aggressive. But again, we are still looking for evidence. Okay, if the market can actually have a very strong rally okay uh to take out 138.20 then that will be giving us the comfort to say that yes the dollar is resuming its larger degree uptrend so uh target over the longer term is 139 to 139.70 okay over in the euro versus the dollar we can see the dollar uh the euro continue to consolidate if the dollar wants to go up obviously the major currency will have to fall back but uh, we can see although the uh, the euro did fall back but uh it is very very controlled there's every possibility the market may actually rebound later on in the afternoon to go to 1.0730 to 1.0755 if this market actually go up into this bracket of prices and a reversal signal actually uh, a result from there then maybe the market will resume its downtrend from here my target for the time being is 10104 10450 there thereabout uh, i have not have any position in euro yet uh, because i'm already short in the uh, aussie okay aussie structure wise is more clear cut there is hardly any rebound the market right now is already wanting to challenge the most recent low here which was traded in february 17 at 0 0.6812 the market takes out this level it's likely it's definitely going to go all the way to 0 0.6730 okay so again this is where i think the market will be heading and i'll be more than happy to take profit at 0 0.663540 40 levels okay i'm really short so i'm hoping the market will continue what i'll do next is i'm going to tighten my stop to break even price to protect my short 
position. So in the event of any untowards rally, uh, at least I won't have any risk. Okay. Over in the sterling, you can see the sterling have a very, very neat three-way rebound, go up to 121.48 and, uh, and I've gone short last night Okay, at the rebound here. And let's see whether the market is going to continue higher or it's going to continue to unravel. And if it does unravel below 1.19, 15, I think it's going to go towards the 1.1840. Okay. I am going to take profit at 1.1850. Okay. So the market here, it looks like there's a little bit of downside potential here. Euro versus the Canadian dollars also reinforce the idea that the dollar is not just simply a reversal, uh, it's not simply a corrective rebound. It is more possibility a reversal of its, uh, uh, downtrend since last September is getting ready to charge higher and if that's the case the immediate target is 136.20 over in crude oil we can see the bit of a pullback last night in crude oil from a high of $77.74 and uh, if the market can stabilize I'm already long in crude oil uh, for quite some time now uh, since last week and I hope the market can stabilize and do not go much lower and if that's the case then I think the market has a possibility of taking up $80.62 perhaps even $82.66 towards $83.70 okay so uh, I have actually bought on the idea that the market will pull back 61.8%. So this is where I bought. Okay, I bought almost near the low. Okay. And over in the gold market, you can find that the gold market also pulled back yesterday, although there is hardly any activity, but a strong dollar is definitely a, a negative for precious metals. So if the dollar continues to strengthen, the gold prices may not have a lot of chance to rally. But if it, in the event we get a rally, I think the immediate top side is going to be $1,860. If the market can rally and all that, this is all you can do, the market may not be able to sustain much higher. And if the strong dollar scenario pans out, I think the a risk to uh, precious matter in particular gold is going to bearish is to be bearish to the downside so i see this as a technical rebound i have gone long uh, 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 gold uh, as a market pullback okay so now i have a very very small exposure in gold and i hope the market can rally to $1,860 and i will have to watch this if the market cannot sustain beyond that and starting to show signs of losing momentum i will possibly get out of my mark of, of this long position because from now until april and maybe early may uh there's a risk that the uh, gold market may continue to weaken okay over in silver market we don't see much of a sign of any weakness in fact the strength in silver is very evident relative to gold the uh the lowest price traded uh, was 21 dollars and 18 cents which was last traded last friday and if this momentum can be maintained i think the market may challenge 22 dollars and 60 cents which is the previous high here over in crypto market we can see that there is a bit of a consolidation now overnight before the market actually pulls back the market actually challenged 25,252 uh, this is the bitcoin high last trade last trade last friday and uh, yesterday there was an attempt to rally in asia could not quite do it and then during new york session it came back down again and i think if the market continue to edge lower it may be able to find support at 23,344 level if this level can actually hold the market it may actually build a base for the market to propel higher to 27,750 there about okay uh, over in ethereum same thing happens the market has already pulled back three uh, in a three wave pattern from a high of 1743 and 30 cents and because this is a three wave ideally i want to see the market testing 1614 levels we did see a low very very close to that okay but we have not had hit that low yet if the market can actually go much low uh, a, a little bit lower ideally at 1614 that would be perfect and then what we do from there onwards is to go down to the lower time frame to look for a reversal signal okay over in cardano we find the cardano has already done a three wave and this is equality the market i was expecting to test 0 0.373 to 0 0.383 the market went down to the low of 0 0.381 early this morning and it looks like it stabilized now now let's go back to the one hour time frame and see if there's any reversal signal and voila this is a reversal signal so based on this development here uh it is quite uh technically safe to say that maybe the market low has is already in place at 0 0.381 and uh, get ready to uh, uh to resume its rally so maybe at this hour itself the opportunity is to buy cardano for a move towards 0 0.454 so this could be a good trading opportunity and uh, if it doesn't work out you have very very little to risk okay so over in solana we can see that solana also pull back but not in a classical three wave pattern let me see in a lower time frame do we get any kind of three wave pattern there isn't okay so what we can do in this 
in this situation is to draw a simple trend line okay draw a simple trend line and if this market breaks the trend line we can take it from there oh boy hang on draw a simple trend line from the high here to the most recent high here and we take it from there okay okay ah okay here so if the market does take out this immediate trend line here we can use it to actually use it as a trigger point although it is less than ideal but uh that is also something that we can consider okay now on the uh i just noticed there is the market holding on the support line let me go down to the higher time frame and see how relevant oh it's, it's actually quite relevant what well, what i did was previously this line was actually not here it was actually somewhere here and uh because the market breaks out I, I just want to shift it to the most recent low and see whether uh it has any bearing so the key here is not to look at this low here but it's to look at the high the market for whatever reason decided to punch through and close above uh this resistance line at least in the one hour time frame uh, then I think that will be your cue to go in to buy on a breakout although I do not like to trade breakout but that is one way you can actually engage a position especially if now Cardano has already shown a, a, a possible reversal sign in a one hour time frame you can take your cue from Cardano and trade accordingly okay this is all I have for you to, uh, for today now remember this morning uh, uh, at three o'clock early in the morning Singapore time, uh, we're going to see the release of the FOMC minutes uh, uh, from the February first meeting. So the content is going to be like who vote for what, okay? Which governor uh, is uh, more hawkish, who is more dovish, and we can take the cue from there. But I don't think it's going to have a major impact because we already know based on the non-farm payroll numbers, the labor numbers, and retail sales. All these numbers are telling us that the U.S. economy is holding up pretty well and that gives rise to the idea that inflation is not fully defeated because demand is still very much in play and that may prompt the Federal Reserve to increase its rate hike again and that will be a negative for equities. So this is all we can share with you for now. So until tomorrow, this is Daniel Ang checking out. Bye-bye.